With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. In celebration of Black History Month, six DFL lawmakers announced the formation of the United Black Legislative Caucus. Here's that press conference. Well, good morning. My name is Representative Rena Moran. Uh, I represent District 65A, which is home of the historical Rondo community. Um, I'm honored to join my colleagues as we announce the formation of a new group here in the Minnesota legislature that will, that will enable us to elevate and advocate for the pressing issues our black communities face every single day. And to give us an opportunity to see the vision that we want to achieve for all Minnesotans. In the history of our legislature, there has been 17 black legislators, but never as many serving at one time as we have now. That's why the six of us, Representative Ruth Richardson, Representative Mahmoud Noor, Representative Hodan Hussein, Senator Bobby Joe Champion, and Senator Jeff Hayton and myself are here today to proudly announce the formation of the United Black Legislative Caucus. As we make decisions here at the Capitol, it's incredibly important for us to do so through a lens of opportunity, equity, and social justice for black Minnesotans. Our black communities face some particular challenges and we're hopeful that working collectively as a caucus, that we can better address these issues. We have significant disparities when it comes to education, and Minnesotans expect us to end this opportunity gap, delivering all students, including black students, to give them the tools they need to achieve. Economic disparities continue to persist as well, and working together, we hope to pull black families out of poverty and truly allow them a chance to share in our state prosperity. And still, we have a long way to go to strengthen our civil rights, ending discrimination in a number of areas, including employment, housing, incarceration, and more. It's taken generations to achieve the level of representation our community now has at the Capitol. And by no means is our work over to seek to have the voices of our communities heard and the opportunities established. The six of us all represent different communities, different constituencies, and have our own background and life experiences. But we come from one foundation that unites us all. So as we, uh, as we launch this effort during Black History Month, I'm optimistic, and I believe we're all optimistic. As we, the United Black Legislative Caucus, known as the UBLC, will give our community a bigger voice to tell our stories through our lands, through our voices, to reach our goals of informing public policy, decisions, and making progress that has a positive impact on our neighborhoods and our state. I just want to say thank you for being here today, and I am honored to introduce my friend and my colleague, Senator Jeff Hayden. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Representative Moran. My name is Jeff Hayden, State Senator. I represent Senate District 62 in the heart of South Minneapolis. I think. My good friend, uh, Representative Moran, has really articulated why we're here and why we should do it and why this is such a historic time. I'm going to also make sure that my friends behind me are able to articulate what their vision is, but I will leave you, or I will give you this, that not only are we here to help pull African and African American people out of the disparate issues and to close the gaps, but we're also here from an asset-based perspective to let you know all the wonderful people in this state that look like us that are contributing. All the wonderful people in this state that are working hard and paying their taxes, that are raising their families from all over the state. We represent not only the urban areas, but we also have a suburban member that is really important uh, that I don't think we've seen around here. So um, I guess my message is that we are going to be a force to be reckoned with. We are going to work with the other 
uh, councils. We're going to work with the other caucuses uh, to make sure that the voices of uh, underrepresented people at the Capitol are heard. Um, but we are going to do this uh, in a way that I think is going to be visible. And I think and I would hope uh, that this is a message to Minnesotans to be helpful. And this is a message to our colleagues that they should beware that we are going to put forth a series of proposals that are going to be good for Minnesotans. And as I like to say, if it's good for African and African American people, it's good for the state. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Nur. I represent District 60B in Minneapolis. This is a historic day indeed. The announcement of United Black Legislative Caucus is timely. I understand and acknowledge the different stories that we have. Some of us as recent immigrants and refugees fleeing from war and seeking opportunity in the state of Minnesota. We're here because we're standing on the shoulders of those people who came before us our African-American brothers and sisters, who have paved the way for all of us. Though our stories are not unique, they're uniquely American. We live in the American for the promise of fairness, equality, and justice. To live in dignity and peace, to shape our own destiny. We have similar hopes and aspirations. We can draw hope from our destiny and we can dream for a brighter future for all Minnesotans. While Minnesota is doing very well in different communities, the struggles of racial disparities put a question mark in our progress as a state. The root cause of historical injustice and exclusion is something that we have to tackle as a state. From Wealth inequalities, the achievement gap, home ownership, lack of jobs and opportunity is something that we have to address in this house and be able to serve all communities. While our foremost concern is about black Minnesotans, the issues that we're going to be addressing is for all those who are underserved and underrepresented in our state. Those issues and remedies that we will be bringing forward are for all Minnesotans. We will be introducing legislative agenda that begins to address racial disparities common to our state for the people of color and indigenous. They are no instant solutions. They are specific remedies. As legislators, we operate in legislative context. And our agenda consists of bills and resolutions, which will be introduced in the House and the Senate this year. Some will pass, some will not. Because black communities have suffered for so many years, we have learned from our experiences. We have unique contributions and leadership to provide constructive alternative to the current situations. The time is right for others to join us our shared values as Minnesotans bring us together and serve as a guide for how we move forward and how we make our state work better for all of us, no matter what you look like, where you live, where you're from, your zip code, your ethnicity, your religion, we are all in this state together. I'll leave you with a quote from Maya Angelou. Do the best you can until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. Thank you so much. So, we are like to open it up for questions. Do you have any questions? Uh, what, what's your legislative agenda for this session? What are the two, two, you know, maybe three or four bills that you'd like to see passed? So, I, I think well, we can all chime in, but I think at, at high level, we definitely need to address some of the disparities within the black community around education. We definitely have to look at job opportunities. You know, it's, it's our belief that uh, we have a community of uh, families who want to be self-sufficient and capable, capable of taking care of themselves. And so we have to create a process and a pathway for that to happen. So we're looking at, you know, within education, the workforce development, uh, within child protection, there's way too many of our black babies being removed from their homes in higher numbers, and we can keep our babies safe in a way that definitely allows them 
to stay in their homes with some, with, with some, uh, some support. Um, but it's a big ho holistic and comprehensive approach, even looking at housing. So um, although we don't have the specifics now, there are bills moving through the body that will address these issues in specific ways that we believe that will be helpful for the black community and thus for the state of Minnesota. So I'd, I'd like to, to just highlight something that I'm going to bring Senator Champion up to talk a little more at it. About three years ago, Senator Champion and I had the uh, pleasure to be the co-chairs of a despair of an equity uh, agenda that uh, uh, appropriated about $35 million in uh, immediate money and $35 million in details to deal with the issues that uh, Representative Moran was talking about. So uh, we are hopeful uh, to come with that agenda again. And our, the lead Democrat on jobs, uh, Senator Champion, has really been kind of at the forefront of that. So hopefully he can help us give some sense of what, what that might look like. Thank you so much, Senator Hayden, and thank you to all those who've already spoken. Um, and so I, too, agree with the things that have been so eloquently articulated, but specifically around the issues that uh, will be on our legislative agenda. Representative Moran is absolutely correct that we have a number of different bills that are moving through the legislature uh, and, and others that we are uh, uh, all joining uh, uh, each other in order to make sure that we can use our influence in order to move them forward. But in particular, as what has been uh, talked about by Senator Hayden, is the equity bill. One of the things that the demographer who recently came in and testified before the Finance Committee talked about um, what our outlook looks like when we think in terms of, of economically, and that the baby boomers are retiring, and, and, and there's just a, and there's real concern about how are we going to be able to backfill those, uh, uh, those folks in the labor market. But there is the group of, of, of people of color, especially black Americans and, 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 and immigrants who are sitting on the sidelines. And so there has to be an intentional strategy in order to make sure that we give them the tools that they need in order to make sure that they can be a benefit to uh, employers and also give them the tools for if they want to start their own businesses because we know that small businesses are the backbone to our economy as well. And, and, and we believe that uh, when you look at every major disparity, what is the common denominator is poverty. So if you give people the tools, the opportunities that they need in order to expand their intellectual capacity and to find ways to uh, gainfully uh, uh, resource their families, it helps them with housing, schools, college. Of course, we know the high price of college. I'm thinking about that right now. My son is thinking about college right now, all right? We've been on college visits. But my, but my point is, we have to make sure that we be very intentional and deal with the barriers that's preventing our families and the communities that we serve from going forward. And as, as, as stated by Senator Hayden, what's good for us? is good for the rest of Minnesota because we are interested in Minnesota continuing to be a leader and, and be the visionaries we are, and we can model that by showing that we have collectively come together to elevate these issues that, that, are, that are persistent and chronic, that decimates our community in a way that we can make sure that we can improve our quality of life. Thank Senator, you. Senator, I have a question for you, I think for you and perhaps for Senator Hayden on this one, the political dynamics of it. Um, it's close, although not as close as it was in the Minnesota Senate. But after the special election, obviously. But um, are there certain issues with such a close margin there that you too, you know, might be able might be able to leverage, uh, considering that the Republicans only have a couple of votes uh, uh, difference. Uh, in terms of members from, from you folks, uh, do, do, do you do you see that? Were you specifically, as members of this Black Caucus, might be able to get, get some leverage? Well, I guess the one thing that I will say is that um, Minnesota's demographics are changing, and I think that that's what Senator Champion was articulating. Um, we have Representative Richardson here from Invergrove Heights to give you a sense that people, not only are demographics changing, the people of color are moving all over the state and in the metro, um, but people are also much more comfortable now with electing broad and diverse representation. And so we plan to take our issues directly 
uh, to our colleagues in the Senate on both sides of the aisle. We will highlight to them why it would be good for them and what their constituents want, making sure with our allies here that they are uh, talking to them. And we would hope that when we bring really reasonable common sense things that will help Minnesotans by enhancing the work uh, and helping uh, African, -Ameri African and African Americans that they would see fit to vote for. Well, let me also say that uh, is that um, our, our Republican friends often talk about business and mm -hmm. the importance of business mm -hmm. and how we want to make sure that businesses have the support that they need and labor uh, that they need to go forward. And if that's true, and, and, and they're driven by data, so all empirical studies all, and, and data tells us the demographics mm -hmm. are changing, mm -hmm. who's on the sideline, mm -hmm where the opportunity is. Mm -hmm. And if there is this opportunity, and there is this opportunity, then they, they should be uh, excited about signing on to policies that will allow us to intentionally look at the groups that are standing, sitting on the sideline and give them the tools they need so that we can not only support our families, but also be uh, an asset to the business co community as well. So it's, it's looking at your interests, and, and, and supporting that. And so even if they just want to look at it from that vantage point, we think that uh, we stand in the right place at the right time and, and in order to join strategically together in order to move forward. Do you think you can make some progress on this issue of police community relations? This is an ongoing thorn in the side of a lot of communities. Well, I believe that we can, and uh, that's just one issue. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes what people do is that whenever we start talking about economics and, and, and uh, really the, the strength that lies in that uh, notion of, of prosperity, we then are sometimes bombarded by all the social issues which we have to deal with in real time. So we believe that we can walk and chew gum at the same time and that we will deal with the social issues as we also uh, elevate the business question and really making sure that our families are well resourced so that they can make decisions around uh, what's in the best interest of their families. You know, so, the, yes, we'll continue to do that. And the thing I will say is uh, with Chief Harrington is the public safety chair, Chief Arredondo, uh, Chief Axtell, they seem, of our big cities and the folks, they seem to be working really uh, closely and smartly with community are making some headway. Uh, so I'm really, really uh, glad of that. The second thing is I uh, had an opportunity to sit down with the governor this morning along with all of the leaders of both caucuses. And one of the uh, things that came up was this issue around judicial reform and corrections reform and talking about shorter probationaries. And we know we, one of the things that will be on high on our agenda is felony voting uh, uh, rights that Senator Champion has carried and passed uh, in the Minnesota Senate. And we know that Governor Walls is thinking about it. His wife is passionate about it. And even Senator Kozelka, as we started to have the conversation over breakfast, started to understand how this not only connect, that the budgets are unsustainable, that we need to make sure that the people who are in the corrections facility and needs that level of supervision are there. Those that are just there on simple parole and probation violations need to come back to the community and get and, 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 and participate in the community. One of the things Senator Kozelka said, hopefully uh, he doesn't mind me sharing this, it didn't seem to be that private, was he's really concerned about families. Well, there's a lot of people that look like me and Senator Champion and others that are in the correctional facility and not with their families. So this is an ability from a values perspective to reunite our families. Senator Hayden, you said uh, before that this caucus will be a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that exactly? So what I mean is that we plan to hang tight. We plan to stick together. We, um, we plan to work closely together. Our interests are aligned. Our histories are similar. We plan to combine with our other uh, uh, people of color caucus, and we plan to stick together and come up with an agenda and agree, and then stick with that. So if one thinks that somehow they can get us on one issue or another, or we're, we're going to as, work as, as, as hard as we possibly can. You know, one of my mentors, as you guys know, is Tom Bach. He's an Iron Ranger. And, the for, and, and, and Tommy Rucavino passed away, and they taught us some of the values about hanging together to get the things that your community needs, and we plan to do that. Encouraged by what you've heard from the governor in terms of education and making uh, education a little more equitable between districts. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Hoden Hassan. I uh, represent District 62A. Um, Minnesota has a long way to go when it comes to educational equity. We have, on one end, we have the best education for white students. On another end, we have the worst education for brown and black students. 
Uh, I am very encouraged that the governor is a former teacher, that he is going to bring the lenses of a teacher in a classroom to look at the educational uh, gaps and educational inequity, and all of us standing here are uh, for education equity. We will uh, try to bring forward legislation that brings equity in education classrooms in Minnesota. Thank you. I'm just noticing that there are six of you and three of you are women. Could someone talk about what it means in this caucus in terms of leading on women of color issues? My name is Ruth Richardson and I represent District 52B. And in my former life, one of the issues that I've been very passionate about is looking at the maternal outcomes within the black community. And when you look at birth outcomes within our black community uh, here in Minnesota, we are the worst <clears throat> and we are the worst in the nation. And when you're thinking about the poor maternal outcomes that we're seeing, even when you're controlling for educational attainment, when you're controlling for income as well, the outcomes and the disparities are persisting in terms of the number of black babies that are born um, uh, preterm, low birth weight, um, and also um, women and children that are dying during pregnancy as well. And so that is one of the issues that I've been very passionate about and working on for a number of years, and one that I'm hoping to um, uh, bring more of a light on within this session as well. Let me also talk on that. So please um, be on the lookout for my Women of Color Opportunity Act, which is a bill that I have uh, introduced before. But within that bill, it talks about the, the number of women who are in the workforce. But also it talks, it has a pathway for women in small business, grants to, for women in small business, for entrepreneurship. It talks about girls, empowering uh, girls of color to be able to have mentors and have a process so they can be successful. Uh, it is specifically tailored to looking at women of color in the workforce, small business, financial literacy, education, and recognizing that our young girls need to see more of themselves in other women in leadership roles. That is really, really important to me. I'm also uh, am going to be introducing a bill around wages. I think it's called um, Don't Ask, which right now we know that African-American girl, African-American women, Latino women, along with Native American women, are making 60 plus cents to the dollar compared to a white male along with white women making somewhere between 79 and 80 cents. That is an inequity that has to be corrected. And so the no, the no ask way question is that if you go, if a, go into an interview and the, in, and the employer asks you that question about how much did you make at your last job, this bill would not allow that question to be asked. Because what we do know is that women are often starting at a disadvantage. They're started at a disadvantage. And so we want wages to be based on uh, your experience, your expertise, and your knowledge, not based on what you made at your last job. So there are some things that Pacific, we're, you know, we're, we're moving the ERA in this body. We have to do something you know, locally here in the state, but also within the federal government. So uplifting not only are our, our, our black young girls and women, it's very important to us because we are highly in the workforce as business owners. We are the primary caretaker of our family often, but yet we have these inequities within the system. So as you look at uh, the women behind us, uh, it is our priority to make sure that women are not left behind, which does not mean that we're gonna not support you know, boys and men and all others. But we do recognize the value that uh, women are often and has been put at a disadvantage. Our African-American girls are being suspended at a higher rate, six times the rate as a, a white girl. That impacts educational outcomes. That impacts the educational achievement gap, opportunity gap. That impacts young girls going into the workforce. So all those things are really important to us. So as we work as a collective, to really elevate the issues that are impacting the black families, African and African American families across the state of Minnesota, lifting up girls and women of color and African American girls is crucially important to us. 
because I know it was important to me whereas when I was a little girl that I was able to go into a classroom and see a black, um, whether it was a female or male standing before me teaching me to give me a hope and inspiration of what I could be and what that looks like was important to me. And we know today that is still really, really important. So we will continue to work on that ends. So, so the one thing I'll say, if, if I would, is that absolutely every single thing that Representative Moran said is important. Um, but those numbers are, are gauged to white men. And so we want to make sure that African-American women and boys uh, and, and girls see all the things that Representative Moran sees. At the same time, we have to work together. Because when those numbers come out and you put African-American boys and men, you have the same level of disparities. So our vision, or at least my vision, and I think my colleagues would agree, our vision is to work together to support each other. Um, and not to be bifurcated uh, by gender and other issues is to be collectively together. Because often what happens in traditional circles is we'll talk about a specific gender to the detriment of one. That's not something that we're willing to do here. I know that Senator Champion and I and Representative Noor have been staunch advocates to work on behalf of black women. And these black women have been hard, have, been work, have worked their whole lives and careers, and certainly at this legislature to support us. So the message that I think we have is that, yes, we're absolutely promoting our chairs and promoting the work that African-American women uh, are doing. But the argument is a little different in the black community in terms of our unity and our ability to do things together than it is in the white community around gender. Final question. Um, one, I just want to add on. I concur with what my sisters and uh, Senator Hayden just said. But with a record women, uh, black women running this year, I think that it amplified the voice of black women, mm -hmm. which was left out in the past. And it shows how much that voice is needed. So us standing, the, my two sisters and myself standing here right now, amplifies all the women, black women and all the black girls watching this, that you can do anything. This isn't only about us. It's about our women. It's about our girls. And it just, you know, shapes a picture that says your dreams are limitless. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.